Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Boogie Stitcher here on YouTube and Schleesum on Instagram. Coming to you guys with my newly recorded Stitch With Me. Since the last time I did it, I was playing Pandora music and had a copyright restriction on my video. So this is me redoing it so I don't get in trouble since I was listening to Pandora in the background. But here we are. I'm going to be stitching over in this area, and we are stitching on D&D &D Girl today. It is my new favorite. I am in love, at least for now, until I get the, um, get the first page done, and then I'm sure I'll probably lose interest like I always do with everything else that I do. Um, but for now, this one is my favorite, and I'm going to continue just following the stitching bug that I am feeling. So we're going to be stitching all one color today. I have a lot of the 3,363 color to do. So we're going to be filling in some of the background. So D&D Girl. So let me see if I can show you. So all these circles are the jewels in her hair. So um, let me grab the pattern for you real quick. I currently use Pattern Keeper. I love it. Um, I don't know what I would do without Pattern Keeper. And, um, yeah, I just, I absolutely love. Okay, so there is what we are stitching. D&D &D Girl, that's not her name. She's actually the mini, um, 20-sided dice fairy, I believe. Um, is her, like, true name. But as you can see, those are the jewels that we'll be stitching or that I just stitched. And so now, so I basically have like this part done and we're filling in a bunch of, oops, we're filling in a bunch of these green colors. So to show you, let me zoom out of Pattern Keeper so you can't see the, um, so you cannot see the pattern. This is where we are at so sorry about the light there we go i'll block it for you um so so yeah all that green is what we're doing um or hoping to do oh one color a lot of it i figured it'd be a good mind-numbing thing to do while doing a stitch with me and like i said i am like in love with D, &D girl right now that's the nickname i've given her D, &D girl because i play D, &D and i love it so let's get started. Oh, and the pen that I use, I guess, that you just saw me fill in the rest of this block right here. I use um, this one, which is um, Vlear, or no, V Clear Water Erasable Pen. Uh, you can find it at Hobby Lobby, I believe. Um, and then this one is the Fine Point Mark Be Gone, uh, which I believe you can find at Michael's. Um, both have worked for me. The Mark Be Gone um, is a finer point pen. And I think you get what, um, blue or purple, I'm not sure. And then this other one is a thick point. Um, and this one is a lot darker. The other one is a finer point and a lot lighter to use. So depending on what stitch count, and what mood I'm in will depend on what I use. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me grab my needle off my needle minder. Ooh, looks like I already have some thread. That's shocking. Most of the time I stitch until I don't have any thread on my needle and then I move on. But apparently I didn't do that. Probably because I think I'm over here right now. So we're gonna um, over here so let's see where we're at I'm on the third row and we're one two we're over here all right let's get started I hope you all are having a great day I know I am I did a bunch of chores yesterday so the house is for the most part clean I need to finish putting away like a bunch of clothes um, I mean, laundry is never ending, right? But other than that, it's great. 
I got my garden planted for the most part. I have two boxes completely filled. I do uh, planter boxes that I built a couple of years ago out of some spare wood that I had that I just kind of nailed together because my soil in my on my land house property um is all very hard clay and so i'm not able to just put things into the ground and hope something will grow because it's so hard i can't dig in it so we're just trying to do planter boxes until the soil will naturally kind of do what it's gonna do, hopefully soften up as time goes on with those planter boxes there. Got a bunch of worms and stuff, but I have two planter boxes completely full. And um, one planter box, I have some, some uh, yellow peppers and then some serrano peppers and then lettuce in the middle and then my other my other box that I have full um has like 13 or 14 different types of well not different types 13 or 14 different tomato plants um yeah and I think four different types of tomatoes so all right, I've messed up here somewhere already. Look at that. One, two. So we got bam. Bam. Let's see. This is what happens when I don't cross things off as I go. Okay. We started the second, and then we went to the third, and now we're doing the fourth fourth so this was supposed to be one two three four one one two three one two three one okay let me let me highlight so I can figure out where the heck I'm at okay I was supposed to do this one apparently there we go Anyway, so my garden is for the most part done. I need to plant my cucumber still. I can't find my seeds. I need to go. Oh, wait, no, I did plant. And then the other box that I have is full of cucumber seeds. They just haven't started up yet. I'll see, silly me. Anyway, my garden's done. I lied, I'm sorry. But yeah, so we got the garden going. That's off the to-do list. I just gotta get the rest of my weeds pulled. That'll be nice. We got some landscaping fabric. And we need to lay all that down now that I've weeded everything. So you don't have to keep weeding things. I hate pulling weeds. Yeah, it's Friday. I've been looking forward to being able to sit down and just stitch. Oh, see, look at that. I completely missed, what am I doing? Does everybody see this? <laughs> There's like a space, I'm on the wrong line. So this is what happens to me, so. As a driver, so I talk to my mom a lot on the phone while I'm driving. It just kind of passes the time. It's nice to say hello and see how she's doing. And um, when I'm driving and I'm engrossed or in heavy thought or engrossed in a, a conversation, I'm like really thinking about like the combo. I tend to miss exits or take the wrong turn or just kind of zone out while I'm driving. 
I mean, I'm definitely like paying attention to like where I'm going and everything, but I just, yeah, will like start driving home when I need to go grocery shopping or just doing random stuff when I drive. And so I always have to find myself turning around and fixing whatever I'm doing. And I find that now I've started these Stitch With Me videos, I'm the same way with my cross stitching as you all just noticed if I get engrossed in a conversation or I'm thinking about something I tend to just go willy-nilly it's like my my brain shuts off and I just go on autopilot which apparently my autopilot is broken and is not a good autopilot because it leads me to random places which is hilarious so anyway, you'll notice that as you watch me stitch. So I'll just start like going on a tangent, stitch-wise and like story-wise. Sorry, but this is life. This is what my stitching looks like. Which is funny. Oh, uh, speaking of like going random places, has anyone ever had their Google Maps like completely lead you in the wrong like location or direction. So again, my mom, <laughs> she used to live down like a, a national forest road, um, like a mile or so, eh, maybe a couple miles down a national forest road a few years back. And I am terrible when it comes to directions, unless you give me landmarks, just like my stitching. I'm a landmark stitcher, which basically just means that I look for the picture or different shapes like on my cross stitching. And that's how I know where I'm at is by looking at all the different shapes and, and things instead of counting like where I need to be. I just look at the picture based off of what I'm stitching. Anyway, I'm also a landmark driver. And so if you can't tell me like, Oh, the one oak tree on the corner or or anything like that. Um, I get lost real easily. So I was using Google Maps to go to my mom's house for the very first time. Um, her like when she first like moved there. And Google Maps took me to a poop plant. No joke, it was a poop plant. Um, instead of the National Forest Road that I needed to be on. Which is completely random, but totally true. And to this day, it's just, I find it hilarious that, <laughs> that that happened. So anyway, funny story. If anyone has been led astray by Google, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Because I definitely have. Okay, so right here, there's like a little piece popping up from when I just started that. It doesn't happen very often, but it definitely does. So I have this little tool, and I'm so sorry, I can't remember the name of this this thing, but it's like a, a scratchy edge here and a pointed edge here. And if you stick the pointy edge down wherever you have a thread coming up, the scratchy edge will actually pull those threads to the other side. So anytime I find that I have like threads poking through or a messy stitch, I use this little handy dandy tool and fixes it right up. All right, and my poor dog now wants inside. She's completely crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video so I can go let her inside and then we don't have to listen to her whine. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I swear she has to be like inside for five minutes, outside for five minutes, inside for 10, outside for 10. She's crazy. Anyway. to I might bump you guys for a minute I'm just 
going to move this fabric out of my way. So I have a fairly cheap cross stitching stand. That's what I'm using right now to do my stitch with me. Um, it's like an all purpose like craft stand that I'm using. And so it's definitely not the most stable thing in the world and I don't use it very often because I'm not the biggest fan. But I'm finding that, you know, it's a lot easier to do, get like a good camera angle for you guys when I do a stitch with me, if I use it. So sorry if it's kind of wobbly. I don't mean for it to be, I just, this is the best way that I can get like, make sure everything I'm doing is in view and nothing is moving. Otherwise, if it was my way, I would just, I mean, cross stitch with you guys, curl up in a ball on my couch. But there's like no possible way I can get a good like camera angle doing that. Unless for some reason I got like a, like a, a GoPro and like strapped it to my head or something. <laughs> it's the only way I could think of to like get a good angle doing that. So anyway. Here we are. Sorry if you're a little wobbly. Hopefully you're not. But yeah, so just enjoying the sunshine, stitching away. I'm absolutely loving D and D girl. Um, I'm loving the, the material and the three strands on 18 count Ada, doing 10 stitch. I did get the mini version, so it won't take me a million years, only five or so. And only that long because I have a million other projects. And you know, I have a ton of cross stitching projects, but I absolutely love all of them. I just wish that there is more time in a day to stitch what I want, whenever I want. But there's just not enough time in a day for me to stitch everything that I want to stitch, which I mean, I'm sure is every cross stitcher or crafter's problem. But I just, I love all my projects and yeah, I just absolutely love all my projects and I want to work on them all the time and just not enough time to work on everything, fortunately. If I was more I don't know. That's what I'm looking for. Not headstrong. Um, I, don't know, I wish I could just like grab one or two patterns and just work on those, you know? But for some reason, I just have to have all of the things. And if I see something that is beautiful, it's like, why not get it and start stitching on it? But then I find that I have like, you know, 10 projects started all with only like the first page done because that's about the time I lose like interest until I like find something new. Like I don't, I'm not not interested in like my projects. I just, like my mom calls it ADHD cross stitcher. I see something new and shiny, it's like, ooh, what's that? And then when it doesn't become shiny anymore, I basically find something else that's new and shiny, <laughs> which is terrible. But I have to admit today, so um, there's a cross-stitching site, um, Ma Maxine Gold, Gould, I think? Let me, let me find the web website real quick. Imaginarium Cross Stitch by, yeah, Maxine, oh, Maxine Gad, excuse me. Anyway, she's having like a 40% off sale on her website right now before she like, 
brings out her May collection. And I've been eyeing like a, a couple of her patterns for a little bit. But I have to admit, everybody, I successfully turned down the sale. I have no desire to start anything new right now. I am currently loving everything that I'm working on. And I still have like one, two, three, I think four patterns that I haven't even started yet. <laughs> Which is insane. But so I have no desire right now, at least knock on wood, to start anything new or buy anything else. Um, cause I'm currently enjoying, I'm, I'm still enjoying everything that I'm stitching on, which is a first for me because normally when someone has a sale, I'm like, yes, I have to go take advantage of that. Like just a couple weeks ago when Heaven Art Designs was having their 50% off sale and I was like, I have to do that. <laughs> Even though I didn't have to, it's just when you get the urge, you get the urge. And why not? Because life is too short and we must have all of the things. So if any of you who are watching D&D, &D, D -N -D, um, I'm sure some of you definitely do, if not all of you, but just in case, D and D is short for Dungeons and Dragons. It is a fantasy role playing game um, where you create a character using a set of rules and and sheets and everything, um, and you basically get with your friends or acquaintances, and you have what's called a dungeon master, and it's the person who is basically creating a story for you and your friends to run your characters through. Um, you normally have like a plot of some sort that you're kind of following and you run into a bunch of obstacles or problems that you guys have to solve either by um, verbal means or by, you know, pretend fighting monsters, you know, in this imaginary world. And it is so much fun. I remember when I was a little girl, I used to want to play um, with my brother who used to play all the time. And I was never allowed because I wasn't old enough. And so I currently play Dungeons and Dragons or D&D. &D. Um, but not a ton. One, because of, you know, the world and its state right now. But also because, you know, I have a younger kiddo and I was playing a lot when I didn't have my youngest, um, who is now 21 months, almost two years old. Um, because my daughter would sit and like help me like roll dice and everything. <laughs> she used to think it was a lot of fun. Um... So you should, she used to help me or hang out with her, um, her aunt while, while we would play. And so I was, I was able to play at least once a month with everybody. But once I became pregnant with my son, I, um, stopped playing because that pregnancy was pretty bad as far as being uncomfortable and sick and just everything being swollen and so I decided to to just stop playing. So my dungeon master kind of it ended up working out with our story anyway that I kind of disappeared from the group. And I definitely do miss playing. Um, but I'm not going to be able to play until the kiddos get a little bit older. Or at least the one gets a little bit older. So... But yeah, when I saw this pattern of D&D &D Girl, I had to have her. Well, I mean, not when I first saw her, but I came back to her. <laughs> I 
because I, I mean, the, especially the 20 sided dice, it's like so. So you roll a 20 sided dice to like determine whether or not you succeed or fail in a lot of things that you want to do in the game. And so that's where the 20 sided dice is just very necessary and just, just like a huge part of the game, so. All right, let's get some more threads here. Working on this one here. So because this is 18 count and I'm doing 10 stitch, I prefer to use three strands. Um, and so what I did, most of my other patterns, I'm only using two strands, so I leave my threads a little bit longer. But because this is 18 count and I have used three strands, I actually just fold all of my um, threads one more time before cutting them. So they're not very long. Um, but by the time you actually like pull them out, they're long enough to, to stitch with because they're folded in half. So, I mean, I find it easier now now that I've kitted up like each pattern to have their own colors, I find it easier right now to have all the threads right like that short. That might pose a problem in the future when I'm done stitching on this and I have all this leftover thread that they'll be too short to use or be convenient to use, I guess. Um, and any other pattern that's not like 18 count, 10 stitch. So I'm still, I mean, it's worth it to me right now to do that, but probably going to, you know, suck in the future. Hopefully not. Hopefully it'll all work out, but. Especially since I'm really liking this loops and threads, 18 count fabric, I'm probably going to stick with 18 count for a little bit. So when I first started cross stitching, like regularly, you know, I have my castle as 18 count, but I was drawn to the 28 count and yeah, I was drawn to, to 28 count. But as I've stitched more and more, I'm actually finding, I found that I really liked the 22 count a lot. So a lot of the projects that I have right now are 22 count because it was like my new best thing from 28 count. But now that I've been stitching on that, for, on the 22 count for a while, I'm finding that I still need a little bit bigger. Like I enjoy stitching this 18 count so much more than I do the 22 count. And I think it's just cause it's just easier to see. You know, I, I wear glasses, My eyes aren't the greatest, but it's just so easy and convenient to see. And one good thing about the 18 count is I don't have to worry about um, the rules of, of stitching on an even weave. So if you, oh, sorry, excuse me. If you don't know, stitching on even weave, um, the, the threads go up and down, up and down like a weave. And because of that, there's certain rules on where you can put your needle. Um, because if you put it in the wrong spot, what happens is your, um, your thread will actually get pulled behind the thread or the weave going up and down. And so you have to kind of pay attention to that and how you like stitch, whereas 18 count Ada or any type of Ada, you don't really have to pay attention to that. 
because it's just like a square that they've I don't think there's any sort of weave at all which is why they call Ada a very um, user front it's user friendly um, beginner friendly because you don't have to worry about that so I think that's part of the reason why I am starting to really like 18 count because it's a small enough count. Well, it's not really a small count, I guess. It's like a happy medium, I guess, for me. I can, I can comfortably do 10 stitch and, cause I don't want to do 10 stitch on 14 count. That's way too big. Um, but I still do 10 stitch, still get the detail that I'm wanting. My fabric doesn't have to be too big. I mean, my fabric is always really big because I buy big projects, but it doesn't have to be too bad. And then, I can see it, I don't know, I just, I just really like it. I don't have to worry about anything. And I think it makes it a little bit more fun to stitch on that way. But in using 18 count, I have a hard time getting really large projects to fit on it unless I was to get like a custom cut 18 count fabric, which I, could, I definitely could do but my problem that I have as a crafter is that when I want to stitch something, I want to stitch on it right now. Like it is like, like an itch you have to scratch. And if you don't scratch it, it's just going to haunt you. And that's how I am with my projects um, or anything yeah, anything cross stitch related actually. Whether it comes to new patterns, like, oh my gosh, I have to have that. Oh, I I shouldn't. Oh, but man, the itch is so real. Or when it comes to starting something new, it's like I have to stitch that right now. And sometimes I don't even pre-wash my fabrics because I just so pre-washing your fabric softens them a little bit before you start stitching. And sometimes I can't even do that. I mean, they'll soften over time as you just work with them and your natural oils of your hands go into the fabric. But sometimes I just can't wait. I just can't. So I tend to get column lines quite frequently when I am stitching because I normally do the 10 by 10 block, like this whole block right here. Um, and then move on to my next block and I tend to get column lines. I've noticed on the, the 18 and the 22 count, I don't tend to get the column lines quite as bad, but I've also been starting to kind of put, sorry, I keep yawning. I keep, um, I just recently started putting like an extra thread or stitch over in the next block every once in a while to try and help with that. So I don't know if it's like, if that's what's helping or if it's the higher stitch count, I'm not really sure. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, one, two, no, I'm on the three. All right, I got, I got lost for a minute here. Uh, 
See what I mean? I start talking and <laughs> I take the wrong turn. I start stitching the wrong line. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, one, two, okay, that's better. If there's ever a project that you guys, gals, everybody, uh, would like to watch me stitch on a stitch with me, or just want me to stitch more of, let me know. Like I'm down to stitch any patterns that I have. I mean, I bought them for a reason because I love them. Like I have been thinking about pulling out Magic Study again, just because I keep watching other people's progress and I just am dying to stitch on it. Um, but if there's anything that you guys want to see me stitch more of or do a stitch with me on, let me know. I would be happy to oblige. Mom, I already know that you're going to ask for many beloved, so <laughs> your vote has been counted. <laughs> Just joking. She might surprise us and ask for the D&D &D girl because she's been liking the colors of that too, so we'll see. Speaking of my mom, let's see... She's been stitching that like moon girl and she's been doing so good on it. Let me see. She sent me an updated picture earlier this morning, but I was busy, so I didn't get a chance to screenshot it. Um, so I have kind of an older picture. She stitched a ton last night. I know um, everyone kind of wanted to keep tabs on my mom's progress. Um, she's been stitching on the moon of the like the the girl with the moon and the and the wolf and everything and she's <laughs> working on the moon and she's starting to get really tired of working on those light colors i told her i'm like when it comes to light stitching light colors like white or silver or just like any of those really light colors that kind of blend in with the fabric, I just, they are my nemesis. <laughs> like, I can't stand them. Because they blend into your fabric and then I can't see or you can't tell that I've like done anything even though you know you have. And it's just, I don't know. I just, I prefer the darker or more vivid colors that make me feel better. Anyway, so she's gotten like the moon probably like at least halfway done, if not two thirds done, cause she's just been knocking out all those like whites. And it looks so good. I just sent her a message to see if she's not busy to take out her, take the frame off and take like a progress picture so I can take a screenshot and show you guys. I keep trying to convince her to start her silk project, but she's like too engrossed in her current project that she doesn't want to start anything else. It's like, well, why don't you be more like me and just start all the things? But that's one thing about cross-stitching everybody is that to each their own, everyone's got their own way of doing it. And um, not one person is the same. Not one person does something the same. I mean, maybe, but there's just so many different ways that you can do 
anything and everything. Like me, I have like 20, 20 different projects. Luckily, I don't have that many started, but I have 20 projects and I work on all the things. And then you got my mom who's only got like three projects and she's only working on two. But she works on one for a long period of time. Okay, so I had put my waist thread down here. I put it in the way of where I was working. So what I did is I just clipped them. And now instead of coming up from the top right and going down the bottom left because I'm going to the right as like a 10 stitch. I'm going to go down through this to push those back down because I just clipped them. So if you didn't know... When I first started 10 stitch, I just thought it was a half stitch. You just come up where you normally come up and go down where you normally go down, just as if you're doing full cross. Well, if you do that, it puts straight up and down lines on the back of your material or fabric pattern, whatever you wanna call it, which is fine if you're doing something like a 28 count uh, where two, two streads, it, oh my gosh, two threads is pretty thick for a 28 count doing 10 stitch but if you're doing something like this where you can see a little bit of the white and you need that extra coverage so so you don't see the white of the fabric what you do is when you're going to the right you come up in the top right and go down in the bottom left and then when you're going to the left you come up in the bottom left and go down in the top right so I remember it if you go right you come up from the right if you go to the left, you come up from the left side of the stitch. And what that does is it puts like, like diagonal crosses all across like your pattern, which not only helps keep everything kind of like square, I guess, hopefully, I think. Maybe it doesn't help keep it square. Anyway, uh, what it does do though is it creates a fluffier uh, backing which allows better coverage on the back for example me grab another project so I can show you guys what it looks like on the back <laughs> so instead of being up and down stitching it creates like this very fluffy back which allows for better coverage on your front since you're using and you're only doing 10 stitch so if I wasn't doing that it would show a lot more of the fabric through so just FYI if you didn't know that because when I first started doing 10 stitch I didn't know that and I was just literally doing the same direction for everything and I found out that You'll get better coverage if you do it the other way. So now that I'm gonna be going left across here, I'm gonna come up from the bottom left, go down in the top right. Up, bottom left, down, top right. Bottom left to top right. And that creates your fluffy back instead of your up and down stitches on the back, if you didn't know. It was very intimidating and confusing for me to like learn about that, watching a YouTube video. I was so confused. I was like, how am I gonna remember what I did the previously? Like, because they had explained it, okay, this row you're all gonna go in this direction, and the next row you're gonna go in the next direction. I was like, for some reason that, I couldn't wrap my brain around that type of concept. But for me, it's a lot easier to remember, okay, well, if I go to the left, I come up in the left. And if I go to the right, I come up in the right. That's, that's easier for me to remember for some reason. All right, we need some more thread here. I'm gonna find my color.
two. I do have four. It's like I'm pretty sure there's four strands there. Okay. Do, 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 do. So now that I'm going to be going to the right, which is my preferred way of stitching, um, I'm going to come up from the top right as soon as I finish this starting stitch. No. Okay, I got to start that over. That was a mess up. Okay. Okay, so now that I'm going to the right, I'm starting come up from the right down to the bottom left. Up in the right, top right, down bottom left. And again, that creates your fluffy background. But yeah, so the jewels are right over here in her hair, and then her eye is just a little bit down here and a little bit more to the right, maybe like two inches. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna be doing, is just going down that direction and working on that first left eye. And then from there, I'll probably continue down the left corner doing the butterfly um, and the dragon. And then we'll work my way towards the dice. And then we'll start with the right side of her face, probably. I think that's my plan. Subject to change at any moment or with any mood, as you all may know. So nice to just sit and stitch. After this video, I'm probably just gonna continue stitching, except get in a little bit more comfortable of a position, which means I can just curl my feet up on the couch, turn on an audio book, and just go crazy before I have to get up and start doing some more chores. I don't like to do all my chores all in one sitting. I'm sure that's probably the smarter way to do it, but I like to do a little bit of chores, sit down, stitch, relax, get up, and just kind of keep doing that. And then I feel like I don't get burnt out as much. I get to do what I want to do while at the same time getting chores done and not pulling your hair out. So personally, that just works for me. So because I'm at this like box and I have nowhere else to go to the right, I have to start going down. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to do a couple of these stitches going up so that way I can do the rest of the block down so that way I'm not working upwards, getting up to here and then coming all the way back down. It's, that's what I'm going to... I don't know if that any of that made sense, but... I have no set rules when it comes to stitching for me. I really have no boundaries. I don't care how, how long I carry a thread or, or anything. The only rule that I have is just trying to make sure that I have that thick stitch on the back. And that's the only rule I have. 
everything else is free, however I'm feeling. So I don't have like a certain like, do this block and then you have to do the next block or, or anything like that. I find rules too restricting when it comes to crafting and if I feel like there's too many things that I have to follow or remember then I find it tedious or overwhelming and then I don't do it so it's almost like learning something new for me as if I, I don't know how to do it it would probably be pretty easy for me to learn as I mean I've taught myself how to do a lot of things just by watching YouTube videos um, but I get so overwhelmed and so much so that I get intimidated and then I just don't do it and I just kind of shut down which is terrible I've been working on that over the years as best I can Well, this happens to me every once in a while. The thread will like get knotted up around the eye of the needle. No idea how it happens, but it does. It's super frustrating. So yeah, that's fun. So I'll have to cut my my end piece, shorter. Um, I don't know why. It happens to me every once in a while for some reason. So if anyone knows why it does that, let me know. I'd love to hear. Anyway, I just realized that this is the second time that I've talked about Magic Study coming out, so I think I should just probably pull it out <laughs> and work on it. I just realized I talked about it in my update video also. <laughs> so maybe instead of working on this, I will work on a magic study and get my stitching my stitching bug out of that one because I keep finding that I keep thinking about it so why not pull it out and stitch on it Right. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video because now I'm dying to stitch on Magic Study. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and call it there. Thank you all for, for hanging out with me for a little bit and stitching on D&D &D Girl. I continue or I'm planning to continue stitching on this one a fair bit. Um, this one probably in Poison Garden um, are my two favorites right now. Besides pulling out Magic Study for a little bit. But anyway, thank you so much for, for joining me. I hope you all got some stitching project progress done while listening to me and watching me stitch. I hope you all have a great day and a great weekend. Oh, it looks like my mom's ears must have been burning. She must have heard that I was ending my video because she just sent me a text that she's going to send me a picture real quick. So, all right, I guess we'll stay on for a little bit longer while we wait for that picture. That's funny. She always sends me a message or some, or does something like when I'm filming a video, like for yesterday's video, she sent me a message like right as I was like ending the video, which is funny. 
like she has a sixth sense or something. <laughs> anyway, so we'll stitch a little bit longer, I guess. So you all can get an update on mom's. I don't know. I guess I'm going to nickname her Moon Girl. I don't know what everyone else wants to call her. I guess if you have any nickname suggestions for my mom's project, let, let me know in the comments below. I'm sure she'll see them too. She watches every video. But let me pull up the pattern for you guys again so you can be reminded of what it is she's stitching. So this is her pattern that she's stitching. So right now she's got her face for the most part like missing her forehead but she's got like her eye and stuff filled in. And then now she's working on all this like white stitching of the moon, which is intense. Yeah, she's beautiful. So if you have a nickname, let me know. Like again, I'll just be calling her Moon Girl. That's all I can think of. Okay, she still hasn't sent me anything, so. Okay, we'll get back to stitching. We'll get back to stitching. As soon as I figure out where I am. on this stitch right here. Okay. It's because I didn't finish a row, so I couldn't remember where I was. Okay, so you can see that that stitch there did not get locked in all the way or like pulled down through. It's close, but not fully there. So I'm grabbing my handy little tool here and I'm pulling those threads through. Okay, now, there we go. All right, I just found another thread that's popping through. And my mom sent me that picture of her progress. So we'll be done stitching, but we'll go and see what mom's doing here. Let's see the progress. All right. Oh, I'm gonna have to shut the light off so y'all can see. Here she is. The details on the face, let me tell you, this is a 11 count stamped kit from Mian uh, Cross Stitch Kits which is the same store as the cross stitch kits store that I purchased my lion from. But as you can tell, like when you zoom in, like you can't really see those, all those bluish stitches and white stitches. I mean, you, you can when you zoom in, but that's what she's been working on. She's like, it's driving me crazy. But the details of everything 
like that face. It's an 11 count. It's an 11 count st stamped kit. And I mean, the face says it all. Like, so good. And it looks like the wolf is starting to come into view here, too. Man, I'm just so jealous that she's working on this one and not me. <laughs> but that's okay. She can. I'll just live through her. But anyway, there you go. So if you have any nicknames for her, let me know. All right, that's going to do it, everybody. I hope you all have a great day, a great weekend. I appreciate everyone coming to watch, to stitch with me, to hang out. Um, I hope you all have lots of stitching time this weekend and get some sunshine. And until next time, we'll talk to you all later. Thanks. Bye.